unfortunately, we didn't get walk-up music. That's what, that's what we're missing, walk-on music. Um, so this is the first of five sessions. So we're gonna talk about automation of everything. Um, what's exciting here is that automation is probably one of the most overused words besides AI, right? Because it means anything to everyone. And so hopefully we'll provide some clarity for that. Um, and so I enjoy, hope you guys will ask a lot of questions in Slido. We're gonna start off though with a lead off uh, talk by Mohan Akela. He is the SVP of um, Fulfillment Platform at Walmart. He's leading the Centroid Project. He's been there for over 10 years. Um, his full bio is in your program. Please join me in welcoming Mohan. Good morning. So I'll, uh, let me just start by introducing myself. Um, I'll hopefully bust some of the automation myths that, uh, that we may have through the course of this presentation. Um, I'm Mohan Akela. I, as uh, Chris pointed out, I lead this organization called Walmart Centroid, which is a supply chain and omni-channel supply chain strategy and transformation organization um, that is responsible for the design of the end-to-end uh, -end network that supports the 4,600 stores and millions of customers around the country. Uh, I have you know, 20 years of experience in supply chain strategy, product management, data science, I've run, I've run operations as well in the past. Um, so really passionate about this space and I'm really excited actually to be here and, and have some uh, time to share with you. Um, you know, prior to that, I was with uh, a few companies. I was with Apple in the uh, reverse logistics supply chain. And then uh, before that, I was with Deloitte Consulting, again in supply chain strategy. So living and breathing supply chain all my life. Um, but based in India, working all over the, all over the world. Um, I do have a master's and PhD in operations research, so you know, love to talk data science, love to talk optimization algorithms uh, once we're done, uh, done with this presentation. And uh, I live in the Bay Area, uh, family with uh, three kids. Uh, that's kind of my stress buster. All right, so let's just get into the, uh, the, the discussion. I think I left my clicker out here. Thank you. Run through this. So before I, you know, I usually start any presentation, I'd like to ground myself as well as the, you know, the audience on um, uh, the, the vision and mission that Walmart is all about, you know, the fundamental uh, underpinning of our existence. And uh, I always bring this quote from, from Sam Walton, our founder, and you can read this, right? If we work together, we'll lower the cost of living for everyone. We'll give the world an opportunity to see what it is like to save money and live a better life. Um, it's so powerful and it is, core to everything that we do, all the transformation you know, that, that you, you hear in the news is all about providing everyday low price which, and so that our customers and families in America can save money and have better lives. Uh, and and uh, one of the things that I'd wanna spend a little bit of time on is walk you through some of the evolution of our, of our business, of our supply chain, um, and how, how transformation, innovation, and automation kind of are underlying this whole evolution that we've had over the last, call it four or five decades. Um, when we started off, customers came to us to, to shop general merchandise items and consumable items, dry consumables. So we built this network called ambient distribution centers. You know, the ability to uh, order fill cases and distribute to, um, to stores um, and using our fleet of transportation. As uh, the stores grew, this network grew. And so now we have roughly around 42 regional distribution centers are what we call them around the country servicing 4,600 stores. We then added this grocery capability to the store. So customers can now shop perishable items, frozen items and so on. And in order to support that need, we created a, another supply chain called the Perishable Distribution Center, which, has, which, con which holds and handles chem control items like you know, frozen, fresh produce and so on. And that's another independent network that we had created to support this uh, concept of super centers that was launched uh, with grocery as a, as, a, as a product category. We then launched e-commerce. This is probably in the last decade and a half or so, where we started delivering orders to customers' homes, and in order to support that business, we, uh, we launched this fulfillment center network, uh, which has the, where we actually pick and pack in each of our units, and deliver through our national carriers, um, which is, you know, or, or using some of our local carriers as well. Now, what we've also done is, given that we have this footprint of 4,600 stores, 
we started leveraging the stores to be able to deliver orders to the customers from the assortment that is within the store. But we were always still relying on national carriers to be able to do that. We then added pickup. So customers now can actually come into the store, order online, and pick up either in the store or eventually even curbside. And, and to support that, we've created capabilities in the back of the store to dispense um, and also in the supply chain network to be able to take the incremental demand and be able to service the customer. And, and very recently, probably in the last couple of years, we've also added this capability of delivering from your nearest store. So today, if you, if you shop on the Walmart app, you'll see that you'll have same day, sub same day uh, delivery capabilities for your grocery order, for your, even some of your ambient uh, items as well. So, and, and we do that by, and we've created this network called the Gig Driver Network, or what we call internally the Spark Network, that will use uh, the Gig Drivers to be able to you know, dispense the orders from the store, and then be able to deliver to the customers um, through, uh, through the sedan uh, network that we've created. So now you see that over the years, what we've done I'll, to the core of our existence, right, which is be there for what the customer needs. I think we've, been, we've held true to that principle. But in that process, what we've done is we've created a bunch of independent networks, right? And at, we are at an inflection point where we see that these networks, while they're servicing the needs of the customer, are truly not optimized for what we want to be as a supply chain organization. We have redundant, you have, we have instances where there are parts of the network where we have excess capacity, and then there are other parts of the network where we are constrained for capacity, and there is, there is not an opportunity for us to be able to leverage uh, the, the assets that we have. They were not connected. They were very rigid in the sense that I cannot add a new capability if I had to add, for instance, um, the ability to fulfill an e-commerce order from a regional distribution center. I cannot do that because we are, our systems, our processes, and our, uh, our operations are, have been very rigidly defined to support specific functionalities. Right? The other thing is we, we don't have, these are highly manual networks, so which means that our ability to flex up and flex down if we need extra, uh, incremental capacity, especially during you know, peak events, we did not have uh, the ability to be able to do the, the, to create the kind of flexibility in that network. So, the, so these are the challenges that we have, but, um, but as I said, at the core of our existence, we want to be there for the customer, and then we will obviously op go, go back and optimize to reduce the costs, as well as provide better availability for our customers, for on, in store, online, and pickup. So now, at, at this juncture, you know, it's, Walmart is all about transformation. And this quote uh, from our uh, CEO, Doug McMillan, kind of summarizes it, right? We continue to change, um, we are adapting, and we continue to transform and disrupt ourselves. And you know, a very clear uh, example, like in the last couple of years, we've, we have embarked on a massive transformation journey. And uh, it is so exciting to see um, you know, what we are uh, coming up with and what Walmart will look like in the next five, 10 years in terms of um, the automation, the innovation and disruption that we're gonna create to be able to serve our customers uh, across all the three shopping channels, in-store, online, and pickup. I don't think I will be able to do justice to explaining this transformation. Therefore, I have a, a good video. Hopefully it plays well. So I'm gonna go roll the video. If the volume comes. It's been about innovation and creativity on behalf of our customers. Ensuring availability on the items they're looking for at the right time and at the best possible cost have been our priorities. Today, we're building a new and different supply chain. It's becoming more automated, more connected, and increasingly intelligent. What does that mean exactly? Our supply chain of the future is about being better, not just bigger. First, we're putting data and software to work in a connected and increasingly intelligent way. We're using more data, machine learning, and more advanced algorithms to anticipate and place merchandise more effectively. Second, we're adding market fulfillment centers, many of which utilize automated storage and retrieval systems, bringing inventory closer to the customer and improving speed of delivery. Third, we're adding a last mile delivery capability and buying thousands of electric vehicles. This connected, flexible network enabled by data and automation helps our customers by improving availability and serving them how they want to be served. It helps our associates by evolving physically demanding jobs into more fulfilling, higher skilled jobs. 
Over time, we believe we'll have about the same or more associates in the company performing a different combination of roles and a larger business overall. And automation helps our business because these systems increase productivity and help us manage costs to deliver a value for customers, continued sales growth, and a return for shareholders. The story of Walmart's supply chain and distribution network has always been about innovation, and we're not slowing down. So such a powerful video that truly summarizes, you know, what I really wanted to talk about in this presentation. Um, and I think a few things that you want to take away from this, which is we are building one connected omni-channel supply chain network that is powered by data, powered by automation and innovation. That and essentially that's the core of what we what you'll see over the next five ten years in terms of the transformation that we are we are going through. Um, the other thing also is how do we enhance the, the quality of work within the, our buildings to be able to upskill the jobs and have our associates move away from physically demanding roles to uh, a more uh, up, you know, systems oriented, now, you know, something that the, cust uh, the associates don't have to walk nine miles a day. And I'll probably talk about uh, some of the details as well in the subsequent slides, but that's kind of the transformation that we are on. Now, in, in my, you know, the way I look at automation is, is two aspects to it, or two dimensions of, of automation. One is the, the digital automation, and then the other is the physical. And I think both are equally important uh, for us to be able to really service the customers in a better way and really be able to kind of focus on improving our cost to serve. On the digital automation side, um, you think about the, it is, it is all about, you know, building these engines, call it planning engines, strategy engines, execution engines that orchestrate the flow of product from suppliers everywhere, anywhere in the world all the way to a store or to a customer's home or inside a customer's home. But these products are flowing through, you know, call it hundreds of assets um, and, and, and transportation to get to the store. Think about the fact that we have ocean transportation, we have Dre, we have inbound distribution centers, we have cross docks, we have perishable distribution centers, ambient distribution centers, we have fulfillment centers, we have delivery stations, we have market fulfillment centers, we have 53 footers, we have sedans, we have sprinter vans. Like these are the, uh, just a summary of the kind of assets that are at play to really bring the product to the customer when they want and where they want. And that's, that, to, that to me, imagine the, the power of the engines that is, that is required to be able to orchestrate this flow. So that's, that's a transformational journey that we are on um, in building out these suite of engines. We are already well underway. It's not that we've just started. We are well underway in building out these engines, and we will continue to do that and keep pace with the, the physical transformation that is also another massive inflection point for us uh, in our company. Uh, the, the second aspect of this is the, the physical automation. The way I see it is this is about um, you know, taking away some of the physically demanding roles in, inside our distribution centers, our fulfillment centers, and, and upskilling the jobs um, to, to have some to jobs like you know, systems operators, cell operators, maintenance technicians, and so on, um, and, and while infusing productivity into your system and capacity as well. So you see this end-to-end this, uh, -end network that, you have, that, I, that I have on the screen, starting with the customer, and you know, at the stores, we're deploying automation. At our FCs and DCs, we have different types of automation. I'm gonna briefly allude to that in the next couple of slides. Um, we have automation in our consolidation centers, and going all the way up to our origin consolidation, and we are we are literally almost going in at, at a in a in a very uh, synchronous way where every as every leg of our supply chain, if it is ripe for automation, we are we are making the change right now. Um, I'll probably spend a couple of minutes on the digital and then on, and on the physical, and then and kind of show you an end with the video. So at the core of um, the digital transformation is our ability to forecast customer demand, which I think I'm sure all of you will agree. If you don't have good customer demand, I think the rest of it is just kind of uh, not very productive in terms of what you would do. Um, so we have our forecasting engines that are that are calculating, evaluating customer demand at a finer grain that we have than we've ever done before. Um, what you see in the screen is these hexagons or half mile hexagons, which we call pixels, and that's the level at which we are forecasting customer demand for a particular for a given item. So think about millions of items at half-mile hexagons 
um, across the country. The, the, the magnitude or the size of the problem that we have at hand to be able to predict the demand. Um, and then we then use this forecasting uh, demand or the demand to then deploy um, the inventory at the right location. So then we have a suite of engines that are called the inventory management or inventory uh, optimization engines that then deploy millions of SKUs across all of these assets in the right quantity, at the right place, at the right time um, to be able to uh, maximize product availability for the customer. So if a customer is shopping with us online or in store, we need to make sure that the product is available in stock at the right speeds if it is e-commerce or it is at, on the shelf and, and the customer does not have to substitute for another item. So that's kind of the, the core of the inventory optimization engines. We then have our last mile delivery and routing engines, which would then design custom uh, service areas across stores in towns and cities all around the country um, to balance demand and capacity and to be able to reduce the cost per delivery. What you see here is three stores uh, in the Dallas market, and you'll see that uh, we have different colored pixels around each of these stores. So these are, these are these pixels are, so historically, maybe taking a step back, historically we used to have a, a very archaic approach of uniform circles that are service areas. Now we are using digital simulation tools to assign the right pixel to the right store uh, so that we can balance the capacity and demand while reduce the cost per delivery. And you'll see that we are no longer going with this traditional, you know, a nine mile or a 10 mile or a 12, 15 mile radius around a store to service, which, which makes sense to start your program with, but that's not what we would do if you really want to optimize your cost per delivery. So as you can see, uh, how we are, you know, how we think about this, you know, your demand engines that are forecasting demand across multiple channels, your inventory deployment engines that are then taking this, this forecast and deploying inventory, and then your delivery engines that are then executing to the service areas uh, to reduce the cost per delivery and obviously you know, meet the customer expectations in terms of speed and, uh, and uh, availability. Our, our, on, the, on, the digit, on the physical automation side, we have several technologies that are deployed. Um, really, really excited about the, the change that, that we are seeing across the length and breadth of supply chain. If you followed the news, we've launched um, a site in, in Dallas um, yesterday. I think it was announced yesterday. We had one in Sacramento, so you'll probably see a lot more announcements coming up in the next several months to years. But um, we have automation in our fulfillment centers. These are automated storage and retrieval systems where an associate who would, have, who would typically walk nine miles a day now can sit at a station and the product comes to the associate and then he can actually fulfill customer's orders directly onto a customer's box that then automatically gets um, you know, closed, taped, and labeled to be shipped to, uh, to the customer using a national carriers or one of our internal you know, carrier models. Um, this this uh, fulfillment center network has the, has the ability to hold millions of SKUs, and it, it doubles the product, more than doubles the productivity, and uh, it, can, it has the capacity to, the way I would see it is, it is uh, we call it cubic capacity, I don't want to get into the, uh, the terminology, but it has more holding capacity, more than double the holding capacity of what a traditional fulfillment center would. So you'll see the metrics are really, really impressive, and we have launched several of these already, uh, the one in Dallas is the latest that, we, that the announcement came around. Um, so really excited about the progress that we're making on the fulfillment center network. Um, the next is the uh, perishable distribution center. One of the, you know, the what things that I'm excited about on the, on the perishable distribution, this is also a case storage and retrieval system. So cases would be automatically received and then held in a matrix. And then once an order comes in, the cases would come out, um, or bots would actually bring the cases out, and then you have an automated palletizer would, which would build pallets using intelligent algorithms that can then directly be loaded on the trailers and then off it goes to the store. The best part of, the, of our uh, perishable distribution automation is um, some of the jobs that they have that we have, I don't know if you ever walked up EDC, but you'll see that associates are working in some really harsh conditions with sub-zero temperatures for hours and weeks and days, right? And with this automation technology, we completely eliminate that and now the associates are sitting in much more comfortable conditions and working on uh, on machines to maximize the productivity, fix issues on the system side, and you know up, increase the uptime of the overall system and productivity. Now that to me is a is a massive, massive uh, impact that we are creating in our business. 
Um, the third automation is the ambient distribution center. So this is a very similar to what the perishable distribution center is. The, the, the exciting part about this is historically, what we used to do is we used, used to manually order fill. We load, case load the trailers and the, the, a trailer would go to the store and then the associates would unload the trailer, sort the cases to, to the aisles and then would take, another associate would take the, the pallets to, a, to an aisle and then would stock it. <coughs> With this automation, we would actually build pallets which are really tall, like nine feet tall pallets that can be directly loaded onto the trailers. But the beauty of this is we would actually build aisle ready sorts, aisle ready pallets, which means that the, once the pallet is loaded onto a trailer and the trailer arrives at a store, A, you're unloading it much more efficiently because you don't have to case, you unload cases, now you're unloading pallets. And then the pallets are directly taken to the sales floor and stocked on the shelf. So Im imagine the amount of touches uh, that you would have eliminated and the complexity at the store, that is one of the crux of the, the automation that this is creating, is the complexity that we are eliminating at the store so that the associates can actually focus on servicing the customers as opposed to handling cases and products. This has been launched in Florida, in Brooksville. Uh, you know, I don't know if you have had a chance to see it, but uh, it's working really well and we, have, we are launching in several other sites and this transformation journey we'll probably have in the next couple of years and then you'll, we'll have a completely different uh, distribution center network uh, servicing the stores in the future. Now, the, how I would summarize the value of automation um, uh, in our business is one, you create a lot more capacity from the same footprint. So we are able to double, ra with, rather than adding more assets and more locations in the country, I could extract a lot more capacity out of our network. And one of the things that kind of interesting for me to see is over the last three years, we have added $70 billion of sales to our business, but really haven't grown our assets, right? And, and essentially the, uh, the way our CEO calls it is we've added a Walt Disney in three years, right? But without any more assets. So that's the power of automation that, uh, that we are creating in our business. So more capacity from the same footprint, visibility and accuracy, the ability to know where your inventory is um, and uh, how, how many units you have in your system significantly improves with automation. We are able to reshape work and I'll, I'll roll in a video that'll actually really bring that to life. Um, flexibility, the ability to expand, or to create more capacity during peak times and not have to train a bunch of associates and then have to ramp it down. All of that can be done instantaneously with an automation solution. And then last but not the least, which is productivity, which is kind of a no brainer in the, with, with automation, but the, the net effect of all of this is that we are servicing our customers uh, in, in ways that we have never done before. We are creating uh, jobs um, that are what that did not exist in the past, and we will, you know, that associates would love to come work with us, and we are adding value to the business by lowering our cost to serve to our customers. So I'll end uh, my presentation with a uh, with a short video that really kind of brings this um, associate experience to life. It surprised me how many cases we can build in one hour without doing any physical work. When I was in shipping, I used to go home tired. I just wanted to go to bed so I can start my next day. I would have never thought that I was going to be working, you know, 19 years later with this robot here. Now I'm part of the future of Walmart. You may not be lifting heavy boxes because the automation is doing that for you but you do have to problem solve when the automation stops and figure out what's wrong. The items on these pallets are sorted by department, so when the stores receive these pallets, they can take them directly to the floor. So they just pull the pallets, sort it in the AC, which is great. They don't have to work as hard as they used to, and that's probably the best benefit that I see as a, as a leader. I want my associates to be happy with what they do. I want my associates to come to work and not worry about, oh my goodness, it's gonna be so difficult today. When we used to have the floor load, it was about two hours per truck. It could be much longer than that. Now I can get them done in under an hour sometimes. It's helped my associates who've been tied to the back can actually come to the store and learn more, learn areas, help other areas out, so it can help them grow as associates. We used to have to process multiple broken jars. We no longer have that, which is another positive side. This is a great program. It's definitely not gonna be built in one day, but it's definitely worth waiting for. We want Symbotic Automation to be successful for the business 
to provide our associates with better jobs. Be open to it, and when the opportunity comes up to work in automation, take that opportunity because it is the future. That's it.